All right, uh, we're going to do a couple more examples of matrix multiplication. Uh, these two examples have a bit of a special punchline. So let's uh, call this AB, and then let's compute the product AB. So remember, if we have a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2, we're going to end up with a 2 by 2. And to find the pieces of this matrix, let's do them out of order just to reinforce that. So suppose I wanted to do this one first. This is the 2, 2 spot. I, I would never do this, but if I wanted the 2, 2 spot, that means I want the second row of the first column, of uh, the first matrix, and the second column of the second matrix. So I would use these two. Th this two refers to the second row. This two refers to the second column. So that would be three times one plus one times negative two. So that's three minus two. That's one. Okay. And uh, let's suppose I wanted to do this one next. I'm just doing them out of order just to reinforce uh, how these things are found. The location that we're looking for, say 1, 1, tells us what to use. 1, 1 means first row, first row, first column. So that's a minus 2 plus 3, that's a 1. What about this? This is 1, 2, it's first row, second column. So first row, second column. Well, that's going to be 2 minus 2 is 0. This is second row, first column. So second row, first column. That's a uh, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So the answer is then 1, 0, 0, 1. And this is a special matrix. This is the identity matrix. And we will frequently refer to it as I, um, or might call it I2, because it's a 2 by 2, or might call it 1, 2, or any number of notations. And here's the proper, interesting property about this. Suppose I took this matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1. And um, so this is I, or I2, times A, 2, 1, 3, 1. What do I get from this? Well, uh, first row, first column, I get 2. First row, second column, I get 1. Second row, first column, I get 3. Second row, second column, I get 1. What's that? Well, that's A again. What if I change the order? In the previous video, I pointed out that matrix multiplication isn't commutative. That doesn't mean it's always different. It means that it's not always the same. Whoops, I don't know the answer yet. Well, I do, but let's find it. Uh, first row, first column, that's a 2. First row, second column, that's a 1. Second row, first column, that's a 3. Second row, um, second column, it's a 1. What's this? This is A. So A times I is also A. Is this a coincidence? Is it just working out? Well, here, we can test it. What if I took 1, 0, 0, 1 times an arbitrary matrix, A, B, C, D, what would I get? Uh, first row, first column, I get A. First row, second column, I get B. Second row, first column, I get C. Second row, second column, I get D. It's the same thing. Does the order matter? Let's try it. A, B, C, D. 1, 0, 0, 1. First row, first column, A. First row, second column, B. Second row, first column, C. Second row, second column, D. 
So what is this matrix? This is like the number one. So this is like the number one. It's a multiplicative identity. This matrix acts just like the number one does, in that if you multiply this matrix by any other two by two matrix, you get the same thing back again, just like the number one. One times 7.1 .1 is 7.1. It doesn't do anything. Now, what happened up here? Let's see if I can squeeze in one more example for this stuff down below. What if I take uh, the opposite order, minus 1, 1, 3, minus 2, and I take 2, 1, 3, 1. So this is B, A. And remember, I mentioned that the order is not always the same. What do we get? First row, first column. It's a minus 2, plus 3, 1. First row, second column. It's a minus 1, plus 1. Zero. Second row, first column. That's a six minus six. Zero. Second row, second column. That'll be three minus two is one. So we ended up with this I again. What gives? Well, let's think about this. If you have A plus B equals I, and you have B, um, sorry, not plus, A times B is I, and, and B times A is I. And then you have A, I is A, and you also have I, A is A. Then let's continue the analogy of the number one. So I acts like the number one. And the analogy is this. You know, it's like, three times one-third is one. And one-third times three is one. And three times one is three. And one times three is three. This is the, uh, the analogy. So the extra bit we get here is that B, which was equal to minus 1, 1, 3, negative 2, is the multiplicative inverse of A, which was 2, 1, 3, 1, and vice versa. These matrices are inverses in the same way that one-third is the inverse of three. If you multiply these two things together, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, you get the matrix equivalent of the number one. So let's, let's kind of summarize this. Um, so the example, looking at two by two matrices, you can add you can subtract, you can scale, you can transpose, you can multiply. Uh, there's a number one, that's the one zero zero one. And uh, also, I didn't mention before, there's a zero. It's kind of boring. It's the matrix of all zeros. Okay. And sometimes, but not always, there's an inverse. Not all matrices have 
inverses. All right, it's important. Also, BA doesn't necessarily equal BA. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it won't. So in this video, the, the summary here is that, uh, one, we practiced multiplying matrices again. We found that sometimes matrices have an inverse. It's, we know it's an inverse because it gives us a matrix that acts like the number one. We can multiply this identity matrix times any matrix, and uh, it doesn't do anything to it. You always get the other matrix back. And if you have two matrices that are inverses of each other, it doesn't matter what order you multiply they, them in. I'll do this example in the next video.